is Sarah. And I'm Gabby. And today we'll be comparing and contrasting one of the greatest books of all time, The Great Gatsby, written by F. Scott Fitzgerald, with Shakespeare's famous play Macbeth. In this special podcast, we will be discussing the theme of ambition between the novel and the play, and how they are both similar, but also very different at the same time. Another common theme between The Great Gatsby and Macbeth are the lack of morality and carelessness that the characters have due to their desperate desires and unadmirable plans to obtain their ambition. In both pieces of text, ambition plays a large role in the lives of characters which tend to get the best of them and causes them to act with no concerns. In The Great Gatsby, an example of this would be Tom and Daisy. Both of them live on East Egg, living comfortably in their colonial mansion in the safety of their old money. Both Tom and Daisy, however, have grown up in money, thus getting everything and everything they've ever wanted is normal. Due to this, they hit peaks of success and happiness early in their lives, leaving the rest of their time a downfall. This downfall leads the Buchanan's to a lifestyle of egocentric and careless lives. Now I will explain Tom as he is very careless. Tom is careless in the sense that he doesn't care for the feelings of others. He cheats on Daisy with Myrtle Wilson. He obviously doesn't pay attention to the feelings of Myrtle's husband, George, or even his own wife. Tom likes to almost play mind games with people. Therefore, when Daisy gets in an accident in Gatsby's car, which kills Myrtle, Tom makes sure to let George know whose car car caused her death, which led to his madness, suicide, and death of Gatsby. Although he may not have killed these men, Tom didn't even flinch at being an underlying cause of the death of three people. In the same sense for Daisy, Sarah. Oh, um, similarly, Daisy is also careless in the feelings of Myrtle, George, and Gatsby and Tom. Daisy begins to have an affair with Tom for Gatsby, knowing that it would be unacceptable to leave her lifestyle, her only child, and her husband of old money to start a new life with her soulmate of new money, Jay Gatsby. She knows that she will either be letting Gatsby or Tom down in her decision of her love interest. Also, the ordeal of affair leaves Daisy to storm out and get in an accident, which coincidentally kills Tom's mistress, Myrtle. She fails to confess her actions or apologize for George to killing his wife. This leads George into going mad, killing himself and and Gatsby, in which Daisy did not have the audacity to even show up to Gatsby's funeral. A quote that explains this very well is from Nick Carraway. They were careless people, Tom and Daisy. They smashed up things and creatures and retreated back into their money or their vast carelessness or whatever it was that kept them together. And they let other people clean up the mess they've made. Lady Macbeth and Macbeth are central characters in this play. Both Macbeth and Lady Macbeth have a strong desire for power and reigning. Therefore, once the witch has given Macbeth his prophecy that he shall be king hereafter, this acts as a detonation into their careless actions in order to achieve their ambition. I think that as the play progresses, Mac develops into being a strong, independent, and almost numb man due to his actions. Foremost, under the influence of Lady Mac, the two begin killing people in order to become powerful. They start with King Duncan, then to Banquo, and then to Macduff's family. As they progressed in the murders, Mac became disillusioned and almost desensitized to the evil and madness he was pursuing. For example, Mac kills one of his best friends, Banquo, because he posed a threat to his ambition. Also, Macbeth was careless in the sense of his wife's suicide. While committing these terrible deeds, Mac grew stronger and confident, while Lady Mac grew weaker and guiltier, thus resulting in her killing herself. Mac's numb reaction of him brushing off her death by saying she would have died hereafter only further demonstrates the carelessness he gained. In addition, Mac was very careless to the actual responsibility he would have to take on as king. He only wanted the title, not the actual role. Hey Sarah, what do you think about Lady Mac? Similarly, Lady Macbeth, although not committing the amount of terrible deeds Macbeth did, is equally as guilty and is to blame as he is. Lady Macbeth's natural lack of morality and carelessness not only allowed her and Macbeth to kill other people, but she encouraged it as well. Also, Lady Macbeth is careless towards herself as well. She allowed herself to take part in a dirty situation that involved the deaths of many people, in which she did not handle the guilt well, thus taking her own life. She believed that a little water clears them of these deeds in the beginning, but unfortunately, both Macbeth and Lady Macbeth realized the truth a little bit too late. In the play Macbeth, Macbeth and his wife's desires for power and superiority leave them to commit horrible crimes, which cause the deaths of those around them, including themselves. In both The Great Gatsby and Macbeth, characters fight against the past, the present, fate, and their ambitions in order to achieve their desires, which leads to the demise of many in both. 
Although they share many ambition-based similarities, F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby and William Shakespeare's Macbeth have many differences. For example, the biggest difference would have to be the time period in which the two stories take place. Set mainly in Scotland, Macbeth dramatizes the damaging physical and psychological effects of political ambition on those who seek power for its own sake. The play is believed to have been written between 1599 and 1606 and takes place around the same time. Contrarily, the Great Gatsby takes place in America in the 1920s after the war. For the time period, partying, drinking, and overall fun and drama was the craze. Furthermore, both stories deal with the idea of fate and destiny. For example, Gatsby's destiny is with Daisy, and Mac and Lady Mac destiny are for the throne. In both stories, the characters have a sense of overwhelming ambition and desire, in which their actions are based from corruption and they change their destiny and end goal. The only difference between the two are the types of desire. In The Great Gatsby, Gatsby himself had a lifelong dream of becoming rich and not living poorly like his family intended to stay. He knew that he was destined for greater things. Once he achieved this desire, he found himself infatuated with Daisy Buchanan, therefore wanting to change his face and become rich in order to impress her and win her heart. All along, his actions were influenced by the desire of richness and love, in which Daisy was a symbol for both. It excited him too, that many men had already loved Daisy. It increased her value in his eyes. Contrarily, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth's desire for power overtook their sense of morals, leading them to commit corrupt actions. Mac and Lady Mac's fate, which was perhaps falsely admitted by the witches, allowed them to spin into a downward spiral of madness and death in order to achieve it. The fact that Macbeth was knowledgeable of his fate, unlike Gatsby, allowed him and Lady Mac to achieve their goal, as well as fall into their demise a lot quicker than the characters in Gatsby did. As we are nearing the end of our podcast, we would like to take the time to reflect on the theme of ambition between the novel and the play. Just like Lady Macbeth believed a little water clears them of their deeds, Tom and Daisy believe that their money clears them of their moralist and destructive actions due to their ambition. Furthermore, the difference in time periods, as well as the end goal of main characters in these two stories, influence their fate, as well as the outcome of their initial ambition. That's the end of this week's podcast. Thanks for listening. This was Sarah and Gabby reporting from CBC News. Talk to you next week.